but at the lifetime, in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet of Islam, there was no such division of holding different opinions and practicing differently. They would agree entirely with the Holy Prophet in theory as well as in practice. So that was inscrutable unity of Islam that we witnessed at the time of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu This is the greatest blessing of a Prophet being a Hakam. After Azra sallallahu and another, there is another institution attached and closely related to this institution of being Hakam, that is Adal. Sometimes people erroneously believe that they are one and the same thing. Two ways of declaring the same quality of a prophet, Hakam and Adal. They sit on the judgment, seat of judgment, by Hakam they understand this, they sit on the seat of judgment and by other they understand that they dispense <coughs> with justice. It is not so. Hakam in the Holy Quran is always used in the sense of interpretation of scriptures in relation to the interpretation of scriptures. And other is just dispensation, dispensation of justice generally speaking. So when the prophets are declared to be hakam, it means the inferences they draw, the conclusions they draw from the scriptures are always right because they are guided by Allah and their verdict is the last verdict. After that there is no difference of opinion, the cho no choice is given to you to differ with him. And other means that they are so just and so absolutely just that whenever they decide, even uh, uh, apart from this, these doctrinal differences, they will decide justly. In every matter of detail, their decision would be a just, just decision. Now, these two qualities you find in the Holy Quran mentioned about Hazrat Rasulullah himself and some other prophets as well. Generally, about prophets, um, and by name about certain particular prophets. For instance, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is described to be uh, Hakam Adal in a sense, particularly during his second visit, when he is declared to be um, um, well, no, Lissa, that he would be a sign of approaching great change or great revolution. This is how I translate the word Saha. After that, his qualities are described that when he did come, ultimately, he dispensed with justice, he interpreted the scriptures in the correct way and so on and so forth. So if you refer to that passage which I, to which I am referring where he is mentioned to be a sign of the approaching revolution that is Saha. There you come across this mention of his being Hakam and Adal. And strangely enough, these are the two words used with reference to Jesus Christ's second coming by Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, repeatedly so. He would come as Hakam Adal, Hakam Adal, Hakam Adal. It is mentioned so often and with such emphasis that nobody can miss the importance of these two qualities of prophethood which previously by the Holy Quran have been attributed to the institution of prophethood and in future too they have been referred to in connection with the institution of prophethood that is Jesus Christ peace be upon him and when Amr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions both these qualities in relation not only to Messiah but also to Mahdi and declares him also to be a Hakamadar, the message is understood that he would be a prophet. It is the institution of prophethood which is uh, which uh, is declared Hakam and Adal in the Holy Quran and when the future reformer, not all Mujaddideen, none other in fact, not a single Mujaddid has been referred to by Allah as Hakamadar. 
while the differences of opinion would also be found in, in their times of course. Why not? Why this total lack? Suddenly when the Imam Mahdi is mentioned, when Messiah is mentioned to appear, the word Hakam Adal is used repeatedly with great emphasis regarding these two institutions. These two institutions in name of course, but in reality they would be one and the same person. It would be the one person representing these two institutions, let's say. So Hakam Adal is also a very important attribute or quality of a prophet which is a very special favor and blessing of Allah which is not shared to that degree and to that excellence by any other person. Be he a Siddiq or Shaheed or Saleh. So when prophets pass away, you go on missing that special quality of Hakam which is never fulfilled by any other person. This is why the need of these jurisprudence, jurisprudence and differences of opinions and the creation of sects after another sect until the Muslim Umbah is divided into 72 sects. You can't conceive of such a situation in the lifetime of a prophet. Because immediately all the, all the difference, differences will be resolved with reference to the guidance a prophet receives from Allah himself. After that there is no question left for any differences of opinion. So this is also a great, great blessing of prophethood and which uh, uh, people miss and look forward to. Which cannot be fulfilled by just the book the scripture itself. Another special blessing of the institution of prophethood as mentioned in the Holy Quran is the quality of a prophet or the ability of a prophet to lead people from darkness to light. Of course the Holy Quran also and other scriptures as well previous to the Holy Quran had that quality about them. And all godly people have that quality. But when you read this about this quality with reference to the prophets, it acquires a very special role and a very special emphasis, which cannot be shared by anyone else other than a prophet. The Holy Quran in one place in Surah Al Maida mentions this about Ahlusallam in the following words. Yahdi Behillahu Manit Tabar is one of who so was Salam. By you, Hidahum in a Zolomate and Nur, Bezmehi, by Yahdi him, Elasurat in Mustafim. Generally, this verse is translated differently than what I think it should be translated. And I'll give my reasons why after reading the general translation, normally accepted. The translation we come across in Maulana Sheran Insight's translation is this Thereby does Allah guide those who seek His pleasure on the paths of peace and leads, leads them out of every kind of darkness into light by His will and guides them to the right path. This is the general uh, style of translation of these verses and uh, those who understand Arabic they would understand better what I mean by uh, by saying that this verse can be translated in two ways one is the way in which this is translated in this way the subject of Yahdi that is the one who guides is taken to be God himself and the translation rendered is this Yahdi Behillaho 